Hey everybody, this is Trina Gunzel and I'm coming to you live on the Legacy and Legends podcast with my friend Nicole, who is going to just, you're going to have a blast with Nicole. If you don't know her yet, you're going to love her. And I'm so excited to feature her this month as part of an exclusive group of women that I'm featuring for Women's History Month. So Nicole, will you please introduce yourself to the family, part of Gunzel family now? <laughs> Hi, Trina. So great to be here. Um, I'm Nicole Barker. I'm a client attraction coach. I've been in the space for the coaching world for about two years now. Uh, but before that, I was a high level bar consultant working for casinos and all sorts of bars across the country. I've done all sorts of international cocktail competitions and that fun stuff. But I realized one day that uh, client attraction isn't all that different from helping people to build a bar following. And I was helping bartenders and bar owners to use social media to build out their brands. Um, and here I am in the client attraction space and I hit my first seven figures in 13 months and have just been nonstop ever since. So been a lot of fun. That's you get an aloha for that. Cause that is fabulous <laughs> way to go. That's amazing. And I love your copy. Like you're so good at connecting with people. So a lot of people tune into this podcast to learn because they're curious, you know, how do you do that? How did you get those kind of results? So I love getting people to know you on a little bit of a personal level first. So these will just be some fun, like kind of warm up connection questions. Um, first, do you have a favorite movie? People are always like, what to watch? Oh man, it is Last Unicorn, 100%. <laughs> are you serious? That's my favorite movie too from a really? kid. Yeah, no, when I was a kid. That is my favorite. It's my favorite book. It's my favorite movie. Um, I've always felt like I'm a unicorn trapped in a human's body. You are, you totally hundred percent are. When I saw you, I'm like, okay. And I'm going to give you, you get little sparkles for everyone we have in common. I'm going to actually send you a sparkler. All right, there you go. You got one sparkle power. Oh, uh, what's the other one? What is your favorite food? Oh, this one is tough for me. This is like one of those things, like, because my fiance will come in and be like, Nicole, what do you want for dinner? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, not chicken. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, I'm a big fan of spaghetti in general. I am Italian. I know you can relate to this. So not any spaghetti, but, but specifically my grandmother's recipe of spaghetti. Uh, I'm big on that. Um, but I am definitely a sucker for like a big juicy ribeye. I love prime rib. I love steak. Um, I'm a steak and meat potatoes kind of girl. No vegetarianism over here. All right. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna have to give you another sparkle. Okay. This is going to be, if I'm out of sparkles by the first two questions, <laughs> let me go to me too. Your mom, I'm curious. Cause you said Italian, did your grandma's recipe have basil in it? Yes. Okay. My family too. See, it's common. Well, that would be the secret sauce recipe though. I might send you that. We'll just see. If they can. <laughs> <laughs> All well, right. My, how about... my grandmother used to use the canned mushrooms though. And I thought that was so weird because everything else was fresh, but she used those canned mushrooms and there's like a certain taste that comes from like the water that's in there. And it, like, it the smell of it reminds me, I never use it for anything but that, but something that's about awesome. those canned mushrooms reminds me of my grandma. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to try that because my mom would add that to pizza sometimes. And it is, it's a very unique, huh, yeah. that's cool. I'll have to try it. <laughs> I'll let you know how it turns out. <laughs> All right. How about, is there a book that's impacted your life? I know a lot of leaders were huge book. I mean, I have libraries. I remember. What, what's in a book that's impacted your life? You know, back in bartender land, I actually had a bartender that I was, I was training and he's significantly younger than me. He was going through college and like, we just kind of had like a good connection. He's just a smart kid. Right. Uh -huh. um, and so he brought me a book one time and it is called flow. And yeah. this book is all about like the psychology of flow state. Um, and it absolutely changed my life. Like reading that book, it's the book. Everybody asks me all the time, like, what book do you recommend? And everyone has all these like marketing and sales books, but yeah. flow changed my life because it changed the way I was thinking of and feeling about execution. And mm -hmm. in the bartender world, it was very relevant for that as well, but it's really yeah. about efficiency, but how you're feeling psychologically as you're participating in activities that like light up those certain parts of your brain. So mm -hmm. super fascinating and a great book for any entrepreneur. Um, and it's a little bit meaty for teens, but um, my son has read it and he's 17 and he also really enjoyed that. That's awesome. Your son is 17 too. Mm -hmm. That was mine. <laughs> you get another sparkle. That's great. Okay. That's good. I'll have to add that to his list. Cause um. The one that I'm just rereading and told him he has to read before he graduates is Seven Habits of Highly Effective People mm, by Stephen cool. Covey. Oh, I love that book. I'm going to write down flow. I'm always looking, people are always like recommending and we can be like, well, no, Cole Barker recommended. <laughs> Add this to your list, Wyatt, before graduation. Okay, <laughs> Great. 
That's awesome. And what about, um, what has been your work in educational history, like your journey to this point? Well, I was going to college like a good girl. I got great <laughs> grades in school. Um, I was a little bit defiant is an understatement, um, but I got really good, good grades in school. School has always come easy to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I was going to college and met a boy and stopped going to college, stopped the law school track, fell in love with bartender lands, um, much to my mother's dismay. She did forgive me once I started winning those interna international cocktail competitions, right? um, but she was not pleased. And so I left the law school track, started really falling in love with working with people. There was something so fascinating about like the, I mean, it's all psychology stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so I spent a lot of time with people in, you know, when people are at a bar, it's not the same thing as meeting them like, you know, at the grocery store or even like a network yeah. or a business event, you're seeing them as their true selves mm -hmm. when they don't feel like anybody else is watching, right? Yeah. So the human psychology part of that, I really fell in love with um, and began bar consulting after that and helping bar owners to start being owners. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just in general, right? Of yeah. running a business, not a clubhouse. Um, right. And helped a lot of different kinds of bars and different kinds of casinos to elevate their sales, build out teams, um, really start looking at the marketing department for their bar a completely different way. And then that's what moved me into this space of working with online entrepreneurs. I love that. I love that because so many people, they think you have to go to college and I'm kind of, we have way too many things in common. I didn't even know. I keep going, okay, there's another sparkle. I just have to do that. The school route, like all the, I was such a textbook kid, but mine was more, my dad got in a tractor accident when I was 12. And so it pushed me like, I felt like I had to help provide for my family at a super young age. And then he survived, but it was different, you know? So they were like, we'd love to help you go to college, but we can't financially. So I booked it super hard, got scholarships. I did the teacher route, you know, because it felt safe and I could be an artist and create and write and I'm an author. And, but I grew up in a family business. So did my husband. So he was like five star, star five diamond restaurant and my family was real estate appraisals. So we just decided let's teach people business fundamentals, had a big photography studio and da, da, da. But it's like, you can do a lot of these things now, like social media marketing, we teach consulting and you don't have to have a degree. So I think that just blows it wide open for people to be able to make more and abundance for all and just rise without investing hundreds of thousands in college, right? Uh, the online market or the online education system, it, it's crazy because you're yeah. actually learning from people who are actually executing it. And That's in college, right. you know, I mean, think about how long it takes to get an approval on an adjustment for a textbook for you know, right. an leave school, like marketing. Yeah marketing books are archaic inside of these right. programs where if you're learning hands-on from someone who's actually doing it right now in real mm -hmm. time i mean literally i mean fraction doesn't even cover it of the price right it's like oh you know, yeah dollar program instead of four years and four hundred thousand dollars plus living expenses and books and all the other and all of the other colorful choices that we make in college right, <laughs> right. you can learn much faster yeah. and actually yeah. learn from somebody who's implementing and you're going to have to get another little sparkle because my parents, I grew up in a, in a family owned business as well, but we mm -hmm. are, you know, being Italians, of course, we own the trash company here. <laughs> oh, seriously. And where are you at? Um, I'm in Reno, Nevada. So You're in Reno? Are you I grew up in Payson, Arizona. Well, Pine, Arizona. Yeah. That's crazy. My, my grandparents started the trash company here. Um, and then my wow. mom actually bought it from them in her twenties and took that, you know, kind of mom and pop operation and turned it into a giant corporation and really did an amazing, amazing, amazing thing and ended up selling that company for millions. Um, when she was actually about my age, when she was uh, 39. Respect to your mom. That's, that's awesome. That's yeah. she's a crush. My, oh, that, that's cool. Like mom and dad, they ran the family business together. And then when my dad's accident happened, she got a job at the school and was the business manager for years. So it sounds like we have mom, mom stars. We should have our mom stars on the show. We're going to have to do <laughs> That's pretty cool. Good. Oh, that's amazing. Nicole. Very cool. Um, that, that, yeah, I'm like, I'm like keying out. Cause I, I just, my brain, I think of like connectors then. Cause there's people I want to connect you to that. I'm like, Ooh, this person needs some cool. Okay. Who can we connect with? That's going to be my friend, Julie Gratian. She'll laugh when she hears this. Cause she got, um, a job working for her. Who's the, I am not thinking of his name right now. Who's George Clooney, what? right? With the, yeah, seriously out of high school. She was my best friend since third grade. And then she did the cheer route. And I went the like, what did I do with band? Like the drum majorette thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shame. But um, she actually does like with their marketing, with their special tequila. 
And so she's worked with bars and consulting, but that might be a fun connection for you guys because I was looking to expand my friends. Huh? Casamigos. You know, that's exactly it. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Bar consultant. <laughs> there you go. I'll, I know I'll connect. <laughs> you know, tequila. I will connect you guys. That would be a really fun connection. And um, yeah, you never know who you're going to meet on this podcast and connect. That would be fun. <laughs> Um, so I guess you kind of shared what, what, well, what inspired you to do what you're doing now? Cause that's kind of a shift, right? Bar consulting. sounds like you were doing pretty amazing. Yeah, it was a pretty big jump. I, um, yeah. I had just actually finished my last contract. I had fired the last person that I was working with. You know, I really had like, I loved her. Like I loved it. And I saw the mm. vision for this amazing place and this amazing space she was creating. And she just didn't want to take risks. You know, she didn't oh. want to she, she wanted to like play it really safe. And like the whole time, like inside of me, it was just screaming, right? Like I, yeah. I just didn't want to do it anymore. I didn't want to be at the mm-hmm. mercy of somebody else's fears. And yeah. so I quit. <laughs> I fired oh, wow. her. I was like, I'm done. Wow. Um, and my fiance and I went to Italy for um, about a month. And then when we came back, I was like, what am I going to do now? <laughs> right? um, yeah. And I decided that I was going to take a Facebook ads course. And I was thinking I was going to open my own restaurant. I was kind of in that space. Um, mm-hmm. So I was like, well, I'm going to take a Facebook ads course and I'm going to kind of learn the ropes and learn a little bit more about current marketing strategies. Um, sure. So I fell into a funnel before I knew what a funnel was. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hello, Russell Brunson. Nothing yeah. about tech. Nothing. Uh- <laughs> yeah nothing about tech and um I got in there and there were 90 modules in that program and I just dove in and I I really like you know did all of the work and in six weeks I got 10 high ticket clients that I absolutely did not know how to serve because okay. I don't know anything about tech <laughs> right. so I begged all of the old men in the group to help me <laughs> to figure out the pixels <laughs> I used oh. my bartender charm to get them to do my yeah <laughs> I said please help me hello hi yeah <laughs> And so um, the coach in that program actually swooped me up and he said, how did you do this? How did you get all these clients so fast? And I was like, what? Like, it's hard, (laughs) right? (laughs) Um, And so I showed him my social media strategy for how I got the clients. And Mm -hmm. he said, great, can you Mm -hmm. teach these to those old men that helped you? And I said, yeah, sure. So I helped them to develop their social media and optimize their personal pages and put the content strategy in place. And they got clients. (laughs) 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 They got clients. And that coach swooped me up and said, hey, you got to do this. You got to be an online coach, like come in here. I'll show you the ropes. And he taught me all of the beginning pieces of everything. And I started the Facebook group, which is almost two years old. It'll be two years at the end of this month, March 25th. That's amazing. Um, It'll be two years old. And I started the Facebook group, ran a beta program. And I mean, it worked so well. People got such amazing results that in my first beta, there was this really sweet girl. Um, She's a copywriter actually. Yeah. 21 and she was working for an agency and you know getting paid like 35 bucks an email or whatever uh-huh. it is, uh, making 1200 bucks a month and she came in and applied these strategies and landed three thirty five hundred dollar clients in three weeks and just went boom 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 and so I was like huh look at that like I I am yeah. good at this and then yeah just never went back to bartending land you know I love that. You really did the breakout. You know, that was my husband. He, he put his foot down. He was just like, I'm not doing the nine to five anymore. It was, it was really sad. Like his dad worked in the forest service and his whole life was like, son, when I retire, we'll spend time together. When I retire, when I retire at 60, his mom and dad both got cancer and died, uh, shortly after. So his dad right after retirement and John was just like, I'm not doing this. It was horrible. It was just like, oh my gosh. So it's like, overcoming all these things. And then like our son was diagnosed with type one diabetes at age four. And we were running this huge studio and we're just like, this isn't working. We can't, you know, I was teaching full-time consulting on the side, doing our business. And it was like, there's not enough hours in the day. And we're not going to be like, son, we can't take you camping. No, you can't go to bare skin meadows for your type one diabetes. Cause we can't get away. And, and we were just like, we're going to stop all of this. We're going to do consulting. Cause people kept asking, how do you start your own business? How are you only working two hours a day? So ours is like the nitty gritty, like fundamentals you have to have to scale right over a million, that foundation that most people miss. And they're like, I got lucky, but they can't duplicate it. Um, and so it was just like, yeah, let's do this. And it took me a while, like seriously to break out of that nine to five. You're so programmed of like, 
you can't, you can't break outside the bubble and keep it safe. And there's that paycheck. But then when you go out and you're like, oh, you enroll a $5,000 client or 10,000 or 30 or 50, like it's a way different ball game and you're not stuck in that. So I love what you're doing and, and totally wanted to promote you. Cause I'm like, Hey, the more people we can lift out of that and teach them that they can do more and be more, they're not stuck. Um, and it's really space. Like I totally respect what you've done in your marketing group. Cause it's so unique. That's why I'm like how to grow it like that and just blow it up. Um, you've done it in a really special way. And I don't know, would you be willing to speak on that a little bit? Cause yours is very, I love that it's outside the box. Like rebels are my people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. First off. Um, yeah. and it's, it's something where, you know, what I've, what I know now that I didn't know then was sure. that most people are learning how to build a Facebook group from another coach. Right. So it's yeah. like this kind of trickle down effect mm -hmm. um, where it's like, Oh, I'm just going to do what my coach did. And that's how I'm going to build my group. And it's going to be the exact same as my coaches. And it'll be slightly different, right? One word yeah. different in the name and boom, we're done. Right. right. Um, and so then we have all of these Facebook groups that look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And so when I came into the market, I didn't do any market research. <laughs> I did not um, get tainted I, with that. I did what I knew worked in guerrilla style marketing for bars. Yeah. Because that's what I knew. Right. Mm -hmm. I know how to build a following. I know how to cultivate an audience. Um, yep. I know how to create connection because I did it in bartender land. So when I built the Facebook group, I used the same exact principles that I used from bar economics, not yeah. group economics. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so because of that, it created such a competitive edge line. And of mm -hmm. course, at the time, I didn't know that. Now, sure. looking back, I can see why it was so effective, knowing what I know now, was because I was just interrupting the pattern, right? I came in, yeah. interrupted the pattern, I spoke differently, I didn't follow the rules because I didn't know there were rules. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. So Because you're not, you're not I, like stuck trying to repeat what someone else did, right? You just went yeah. into your space and was like, I'm, I could do this. Let me duplicate what worked in the real world in the online space. Cause it is still the real world. Like real humans, you're real human. Me too. Real humans helping real humans. How novel. <laughs> yeah, no. And that's it. It's like in the online world, everybody pretends like it's not real. Yeah. Right. And that's not true. Like, I mean, the same microcosms that we're creating in a Facebook group and the same yeah. style of relationships are the same microcosms that we created in, in a box setting. It's, it's the same yeah. feeling. And there's, you know, ways to slice out the target demographics of saying, okay, you know, if you were looking at a piece of property and you were going to go open a new, a new bar space, you would look at who your neighbors are. You would look at who's yeah. there. You would look at what the community needed and mm -hmm. you would see the need and you would fill the need. That's how you yeah. open a successful business. And so this isn't any different. And when I came into the female entrepreneur space, what mm -hmm. I saw was that there was this fake camaraderie. Mm. And I said, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not yeah. interested in pretending I'm not going to have a pink, white and taupe banner and that we're all going to be friends <laughs> and stab each other in the back. I'm not interested. In right. That. Yes. When I created the group, I said, we're getting rid of that whole no, no, yeah. no promo rule. Like I'm getting right. rid of that. And I was the first group to, you know, besides the spam groups. Right. But I was right. the first group r run by a coach to say, you know what, go ahead and promote your stuff for free. And now everyone feels like it's normal. But mm -hmm. two years ago, no one was doing that. I was the only yeah. one. You help make that like do that. Cause I noticed that too. I didn't really understand groups when I started. I just was word of mouth. Our business has always been word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And years ago, I feel like I, I tried because I'm 45. I don't know how old you are. You're 28, right? Forever. <laughs> we'll take it. 37, okay. 37 these days. Fabulous. So I get the ones who are kind of like, these kids, 28, 32, like Trina, I want to be like you when I grew up, like you have five published books, you're an international speaker, you're a trainer, you've done all these things. And it's like, uh, I'm just trying to share, like, I feel like I started Facebook groups before they were cool. <laughs> like, I tried to tell people, I was like eight years ago, so I'm like, Hey, this is a neat idea. We can get together. I tried to start like a mom's pay it forward group and a sunshine box group and all this and nothing ever like took off. And then my group's still small because I don't let everybody in there. That's one of my things is I kind of screen it at the door <laughs> because I'm like, I, I want people who actually will engage kind of a safe space, not anything. And I love what you've done because it's so much bigger, right? You have tons of people. Um, but it was just like, I was still trying to figure that out. So just how do you take this and make this concept bigger? And I've noticed a lot of men, like they're just not comfortable in it at all. They don't value or understand really what Facebook groups are about yet. So I've watched women kind of go in the Facebook group space. Have you seen that too? 
Yeah. I mean, I think that men come at it from a different angle. And so sure. for them, it's like, you know, the men that have successful Facebook groups, um, I mean, they're definitely using polarity, right? Yep. Um, they're using polarity and, and competition. Um, yeah. Whereas women are using the collaboration angle and for, mm -hmm. And now I, I do believe that most of the groups have kind of weeded out the ones that were fake collaboration. And most yeah. of them now are, are pretty much true. And I think that there's mm -hmm. a lot of leaders that are really coming together to do that. Whereas in the male space, it is more dominant as far as like their, their giant Facebook groups are built on a sense of, hey, come in here and compete, right? Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah, <laughs> right. It's kind of a different angle. Yeah. And it's cool though, because I like, I like to have both. I mean, you see both <laughs> in those spaces for that. And I just, I don't know. It, it's been fun to find kind of a, a feminine space, but then like I enjoy your group because you're very direct. And I think that's super fun. And it does catch you kind of off guard where it's like, wow, she's so truthful. It's you're a real human. And some, you just can't tell you're like, is this the same person? Like, if you meet me, if we go out to lunch, I'm the same person, you know, it's just, people <laughs> yeah. are like, you look and act exactly the same as you do on Facebook. Yeah. Cause yeah. that's who I am. I, I never really wear makeup. It doesn't show up. I try, but whatever. Yeah, no, I don't, do, I don't wear makeup. I don't do my hair. I, you know, I I'm going to, if we're going to lunch, I'm going to show up in my pony pants too. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll buy a pair of pony pants. We can do the unicorn party. That's really awesome. <laughs> All right. You're so easy to talk to. I know I'd have to write some questions because otherwise we could probably talk for hours, but I'm going to like, were there any other ones to ask Nicole? Let's see. Okay. What message are you wanting to share through your work? So this for me kind of has evolved, right? Um, yeah. In the beginning, the, the message I think was just like, don't die, right? <laughs> I was just trying to make it, right? <laughs> just keep going. Um, but now as I have a little bit more longevity and I have a little bit more faith in the fact that I'm not going back to bartending and I have the space um, and the audience to kind of speak that out, uh, mm -hmm. my signature line on this is your true self attracts your true believer. And mm -hmm. I do mean that in the context of showing yeah showing who you really are warts and all. And, you know, a lot of people say that, but yeah. very few people actually live it. So inside yeah. of my audience, inside of watching my lives, you're going to hear the real stories from my life. My podcast mm -hmm. is, is very raw. And I talk about the things that most people are very uncomfortable talking about. Um, yeah. That was in the before land of, of who I used to be and how I got to be sure. the person that I am, but also in business. And I really share the behind the scenes um, of what's hard. And I talk about the things that a lot of people won't talk about. And so for me, I'm willing to, I'm willing to take those arrows in the back and trailblaze that because I feel like it's so important for people to be authentic and the real type of authentic, not the toxic positivity version of authentic. Yeah, it's so true. It is so true. And a lot of people aren't kind of ready for that. I know when you take on the social media presence, like my family initially, I think had a hard time when I would share such real stuff. I'm like, it's hard. Yeah. We were up every two hours last night with Wyatt and vomiting and type one diabetes isn't always fun when he has blood sugar, hard days or sight came out while he's sleeping. And, but people have also been like, wow, you are genuine. Like you tell us when you're having hard days and I wish, and I'm hoping more entrepreneurs will be honest with that. Cause there's this weird, like I don't know, movement or thing. I keep hearing from some people now, like you don't need support and you can do it on your own. And I'm like, I, yeah, you know what, when you isolate yourself and you take all this stuff, that's so hard on your mental health and you crash, you know, and I've had that happen too, where I was like trying to be tough and pouring down all these people and always helping them. But then I forgot to be like, oh gosh, who's, who's helping me? Like I have to, you know, do for myself what I'm doing for everybody else. So I love meeting people like you, where it's like, yeah, you know what? I'm sure if someday I just left you a voice note, I was like, wow, Nicole, today was really hard. And I just need to tell somebody, ah, <laughs> like, I get it. <laughs> you know, you're not alone. I think that's it too, is, I mean, social yeah. media has taken this kind of wild journey, right. And become mm -hmm. such an integral part of our lives. And yeah. the fact of the matter is, is that we don't have a parental unit to model social media from. It's true. We, we are the pioneers of social media. So yeah. we are the ones setting the center stage for how social media is going to evolve um, generation mm -hmm. to generation. And so we didn't have this modeled for us. So we're all making right. mistakes. We're all learning through it. And there was this kind of plastic phase where everyone was like just putting on the makeup and the show and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think in the coaching industry, 
it's so mm-hmm. common that you feel like you need to be perfect in order for people to buy because they're yeah. like, well, if, if people know <clears throat> that I was up crying all night last night because I had a nightmare because I was doing all this subconscious work, they're not going to buy from me. Yeah. But really, <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, is that people want to buy from people who are in a state of transformation. And in order to right. be in a state of transformation, you have to admit that you're transforming from something into yeah. something. So you have to be willing to talk about who you used to be in order for who you're becoming to be relevant. Oh yeah. It's so true. In those moments, like people will connect with you so much more. Like one of my videos that went viral, I was literally sobbing outside of Walgreens. I was so frustrated because every year it's been, he was diagnosed when he was four, he's 17. So it's like every year there would be this issue where his insurance, even though we pay it like over 2000 a month for this ridiculous insurance, they'd be like, Oh, he's not covered. Like every January. Oh, we're not covering his insulin. I'm like, every single year you guys really. And, and so it was just, I had just this moment of like, I had to call my insurance and get back and go through the hoops and I was just over it. And I just got on and like shared that. I didn't even know much about wives. This was, I don't know, five years ago or something. And people just were like praying for me and reaching out. And it's like, when you share those real stories, you know, we are human, but I almost think it's because everyone growing up on movies and TV, you know, you had these people that were up there on screen, but they weren't you couldn't access them. They were movie stars. And now when you can see a friend on, you know, like this on a podcast or on a Facebook live and realize they had a hard night too, or, you know, or they're going through something, then they are relatable. If you'll reach out and just make an actual connection. Like I'm always like, if somebody's on your heart, please reach out. Cause usually there's something going on and they need to hear from you. Yeah. And it's so interesting because social media has connected us in Mm -hmm. so many different ways, but also isolated us in so many different new ways that we don't really have the tools yet to deal with the type type of isolation that social media creates because we feel alone at a different level. I mean, I watch the kids going through it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, I'm I'm thankful every single day that I did not have social media when Mm -hmm. I was in high school because it is, it's- There's another one. There's another one (laughs) for that one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. torture. You know, I, I ended yeah. up, both of my kids are now homeschooled um, because like this stuff is, it's, it's mine too. Yeah. I want them to have, be equipped yeah. with social skills that help yeah. them to elevate. And, you know, for my daughter, I mean, she's in middle school, mm-hmm. which is tough for everyone. Sure, <laughs> but sure. watching her go through middle school and watching the endless cycle of girl on mm-hmm. girl craziness and torture and all these things. I'm like, it's got to stop. She no. needs a break and she never gets a break because, of the, you know, it's like, I have to take her phone from her in order for there to be a break from the constant social interaction. And yeah. the kids don't have the tools to cope with that because we don't have the tools to cope with that, to give to them. Mm-hmm. So it's a kind of strange learning curve for our children. Um, and for me, like, I don't like to watch her suffer through it. I want to help her to develop social skills and internal validation without needing all of that. And pulling her out of school was a difficult decision, um, yeah. but she's so much happier. She's so much right? happier because I can give her the things that she needs now. Yeah. How old is your daughter too? Um, she's 11. Okay. My daughter's 12 <laughs> and she, like, she's been homeschooled the whole time. We started homeschooling Wyatt when he was two because of the, or in second grade, not two with the health issues, but it's been the best thing for her. Like my kids, they thank us because there's that, that pressure off. Like they can just be themselves and communicate and you can travel when you want to. Like we traveled full time for three years, took them to Italy for our 20th anniversary. It was like amazing. But then having intentional times, they can get together. Like so her and her little friends, they'll get on like, like this on zoom and bake together. You know, (laughs) yeah, during COVID when they couldn't get out or she's doing like a little babysitter club and, you know, just finding different ways to connect because they can't always physically get together, but it's a neat way. So that might be a fun little friendship too, because Abby always loved connecting with people and um, yeah, I would, I would love to put Penny in with it because I, I am new to this. This is her first yeah. year. And so yeah. I'm looking for more tools to better equip her and like, and honestly, better equip me right? sure. <laughs> yeah. better equip me because I don't know how to homeschool. I'm learning, right? Like I'm yep. learning this process. Um, but the, the ability to travel has been, I mean, we, we were in Tulum for a month. I we, saw that was amazing. Yeah. I want to know where that place was. That was really cool. Yeah. Amazing. Um, but it was so great to be able to just take the kids and not have to worry about school. They still had their online platform to do the things, um, yeah. but it was like, they got to learn. I mean, we went to all sorts of museums and we went to the cenotes and we went uh-huh. scuba diving and like all sorts of these amazing, yeah. like real experiences instead of reading about it in a book. Right. Yeah. 
getting to actually go and just pick up the kids and take them whenever you want, like it's life changing, right? Like, it I is. Had that as a kid. <laughs> I know me too. That my whole family would tease me because my husband was very well traveled and I had done like back and forth to Michigan to visit family, but that's it kind of driving. Um, and it was different, like traveling out of the country they had their passports little. I just got mine as an adult you know, recently. And, and it was like all these fears I didn't even know I had, but fear of my only comparison for any beautiful mountains was pine, Arizona. And now, like, <laughs> now I can like Germany, you know, or, or like where we went specific places in Sicily. It's like, Oh, this is exactly the place you have different reference points. And it's completely different. Like their whole life trajectory from doing those experiences. Um, they can travel, they could communicate. I tell them life is a field trip, right? <laughs> I get to do a really cool cocktail competition in Sicily. And it you was, did? Uh, yeah, with Di Sirono. Uh -uh. Um, no. Yeah, and I loved Sicily. The food Wasn't there gorgeous? was amazing. And the, the color of the water in Sicily is unlike anything I've ever seen. It was so beautiful. Yeah, I was trying to think. I'll have to text you the, the resort we stayed at right now. I cannot pull it up, but it was um, both my family, like both generations are from Sicily. So we got to go in one of the places we stayed at. Um, they took us to a bed and breakfast for one of the dinners. And she was like, I know exactly where your grandma's from. You come back here and I'll go show you. I was like, this is so cute. Like, what's, and everybody, what's your, what's your maiden name? Le Cavalli. Okay. We're Le Cavalli. Yeah. yeah. We're Rizzoli and Donatelli. Oh, cool. Okay. And my mom's side's Mandracina. So <laughs> we'll have to look if we show up on the family tree. So <laughs> that's so cool oh my gosh I love visiting with you I feel like I could visit with you all day but I I know you have time so I'm gonna look if there's a few other get your questions ones. in <laughs> let me see what else about um okay if what would you recommend to people who are wanting to gain traction in their social media networks and grow their audience like you did at stellar and I know that's your program so don't feel like you have to but feel free to make a plant or whatever for that because I want everybody to be able to know about you it's amazing what you've done Growing the audience is, I mean, building on that concept of, of your true self attracts your true believer and really not being scared that you're not going to attract enough people. Like, I think wow. that that's kind of the first mistake that everybody mm. makes is that they're trying to be everything to everyone. And we know this, that, that niching is important, right? Mm -hmm. But if we can say that logically, but like energetically, there's a fear of rejection, right? There's the fear yeah. of like, what if people don't like me? Right? right. And so being able to energetically soothe that first, which is a lot of what we do in the program is building that self-assurance, not just saying, go be yourself. Right. It's like yeah. how to be yourself. Right. Yeah. Um, and how to feel okay being yourself, even when you know, it's not perfect. Right. Mm -hmm. And so really kind of coming into yourself with that, that is the primary piece that we have to do before we start optimizing your profile. So I'm going to give you a quick little rundown to optimize your profile to set you up for success. Um, because mine is done a little bit differently. Um, I certainly don't do it the way that uh, the coaches teach it. And so I yeah. do believe that that is a good portion of why it's so successful. <laughs> uh -huh. Stands out. Your work. First and foremost, you know that your profile picture is your window to the world, right? This is mm -hmm. your name to face to brand recognition. Um, I see that it's very common for people to change your profile picture. Do not do that. Um, mm -hmm. Choose an image that you have a look on your face and that that actual, like, remember that we're wired for facial recognition. Yeah right? So we can identify thousands of different emotions on faces. So what you want to do is take that little handy dandy phone of yours, hold it in front of your face. And you want to take a picture of your face that displays this yeah, very good <laughs> displays the specific emotion that <clears throat> your clients get when they get results. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. So it's like an energetic connection point. So for me, I want my clients to feel that feeling of opportunistic poise, like they're limitless. And mm -hmm. so that's the facial expression that I use for my profile picture. And it's never changed. I do not change it. So we keep it on there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, then the banner. Now you're going to hear lots of people tell you about the banner where they say, oh, you know, you know, put your catchphrase up there, put your I help <laughs> statement up there. Yeah. I'm going to tell you not to do that. <laughs> Okay, cool. I'm going to tell you that your banner is your place to be your true self, the most important place, because they're going to see your face and then they immediately look at that banner because that banner is your billboard. And so really you want to show something that's very true about you. That is a conver conversational starter instead of what you do, instead of um, that kind of like, this is my job. Because so frequently, like when people ask you, like, you know, who you are. You yeah. say, oh, I'm a firefighter. We like identify with our job, but is mm -hmm. that who you really are? Like, is your job who you are? No. Right. Your banner is a place for you to show who you are. 
And that creates a different level of connection than just mm -hmm. what you're selling. And also, I mean, the, the caveat with this is that when you immediately put up what you're selling on your banner, people will not send you as many friend requests because they know that immediately they're going to get pitched. Even mm. though you may not do that sleazy style of marketing, yeah. lots of people do. And so they're going to assume that they're going to get pitched the second they send you a friend request. So people are being, are scared of being sold. They don't like mm -hmm. it. So if you don't come at that angle, you're going to get more friend requests from that. You can put that little snippet of what you do, but absolutely result driven in your bio line. And then you want to clean up that about section section. Nobody cares where you went to high school <laughs> unless you were 19. Right. Take that off of there. <laughs> right. Clean that up. The, the more, the cleaner that about section is, the more likely it is that they will click on a link. So you want to give them one clear point of direction, one CTA, not you could go here, 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 here. Uh -huh. um, it's a great place to put your group. Um, and now Fe Facebook has this current feature, which could change in the near future. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> don't hold your breath, but it has the ability to pin a post. And in that pinned post, this is a great place to talk about the vision of your business and what you do and how you help people so that it kind of goes like how you would have a meet and greet with a real human, right? It's yeah. like, hey, this is my face. This is who I am. This is my actual vibration of the kind of person I am. And this is something that I say that's really important. Um, this is who, where I came from. This is my bio. This is what I'm all about. And then this is my job, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of follows that natural flow. And when you start to optimize your profile like that, you're going to get more friend requests and you're going to be able to build your audience from a place of alignment instead of just catch on. That's beautiful. Now you communicated that awesome because a lot of people, it is confusing. There's so many people saying so many different things. And I'm like you, a lot of times I'm like, I'm just going to create it the way I want it to look like, you know, I travel, I have some family pictures or whatever. And, but you try, you see what people are doing and try to see what's working. But for you, do you still see Facebook as working like the group aspect and growing that and using it? Cause I see a lot of coaches bailing go, Facebook isn't working. We're only going to this or this. No, I mean, for me, that's never been a problem. Um, I think that every strategy works when you apply mm -hmm. mindset, right? So yep. whatever you love is going to work the best for you. If you're the kind of person that absolutely loves Instagram, then use Instagram as your primary platform. If you love TikTok, do that, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yep, exactly. You know, if Facebook groups make your skin crawl and you mm -hmm. don't like it, then of course it's yeah. not going to work for you. Because yeah. You're not going to love it, right? So for me, I love my group. I love the space that it's in. Um, yeah. I've built a healthy relationship with social media. I don't yeah. say things like I hate Facebook because I don't. I mean, it's it's built my entire business and more mm -hmm. than that, it's felt, it's helped me to build a faith in community that I've never really had in any other context. I love that. I love that. And that's, that's the thing you really have built community and you've mastered like that social piece where you took what worked offline and brought it online. And I try to tell people that too, like pick what you love. If you don't love the space, it's not going to be fun. I'm super social. Like I didn't really enjoy all the lockdown COVID things. So I found more ways to like, how can I make it fun and connect where I'm not just at home alone? Like I miss my family. It's been years. I'm like, this is crazy. We're used to getting together. But um, when you can find those ways to connect, like you've done, and I love that you themed it. I thought that was a really <laughs> unique thing too. That's so you, like, I'm sure you've seen Wonder Woman you have must have seen that because yeah. you embody like that strength fun. And it's just that energy that it's just like you, you are a sparkler. That's why I had to talk to you. Cause I'm like, okay, Nicole gets it. She's a sparkler too. And you're, you're serving the space. And when you agree, like people get this weird fear, like we can't do the same thing. Even if you were doing exactly the same thing, it's not going to be the same because you bring different energy. You have different likes and interests, you know? Mm -hmm. There's different ways to expand on the same concept, right? Um, no. Sales are sales are sales. We are yeah. all building on on decades and, and centuries of how sales and trade work. And we're just yeah. consistently helping it to evolve based on what tools we have. And so you're never going to be reinventing the wheel with your brand. You're always going to be pulling mm -hmm. from some sort of reference that you have. So give yourself that unapologetic kind of energy to choose something that resonates with you simply because it resonates with you without thinking to yourself, well, but are other people going to like it? Is the market mm -hmm. going to like it? Is this the right position for the market? Like, no, is this the right choice for you? Yeah. Um, and when you're designing your Facebook group concept, um, you know, the theme idea with this, like it again, was just not something that was common when I started mm -hmm. doing it. So it was a good pattern interrupt, but I didn't know that right yeah. now everybody's doing it, but it's that thing of like something that truly resonates with you is going to help you to attract people that like that thing. And it's also going to help you to repel things. 
mm -hmm. actually changed the name of the Facebook group one time because it yeah. used to be client attraction secrets for Wonder Woman. And now it's unicorn client attraction secrets for high vibe Wonder Woman, right? So I added a couple words in there. Yeah. And I changed the name of the group. You know how it like sends the announcement? Yeah. There was a girl that got on in the group and she posted this post and she said, the name of this group is so stupid. What? <laughs> How did you do that? Why did you just leave? I don't, I don't know. But it was so funny. And like my assistant at the time was like, oh my gosh, like, should I post this through? And I was like, yeah, send it, right? Like, put it through. I want to see what they say, right? Right. And it was so amazing because it was at that like moment that I realized like polarity is part of this, is that I yeah. don't want everybody in my Facebook group. I want people yep. to energetically align with the things that I stand for and the things that I stand against. Um, yeah. And kind of to shape that vibration, right? When I chose mm -hmm. Wonder Woman instead of Superwoman or Catwoman, yeah. the reason that I chose Wonder Woman um, was because of the feeling that that character embodies surrounding the concept of injustice. Mm -hmm. um, I have a strong like justice bone in me. And so, I mean, I didn't make it through law school, but I thought about it, right? So <laughs> it was right. That of, like that iconic character to me represents overcoming injustice and standing mm -hmm. against things that aren't right. And so that's who I am as a core person and that value I share with that character. And so the people that join my group also share that core value. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that we have to be the same. It's not even that we have to agree. We don't have yeah. to agree. We just have to agree at that core value that we have the ability to disagree. And that's what strengthens the community is that core belief system. That's so good. It's so good. And I mean, I think that's, I'm not only only women in business or men. I mean, obviously I work with my husband. We have our, you know, our brand is family. We work together, but I think a lot of guys also resonate with that message. Like I've debated, oh, do I want to open it up, you know, men and women, because I want to help both. But it's interesting. There's kind of a different thing. Like the women in my group asked me, just keep it to women because they like that space. Mm -hmm. I had that same thing happen in the beginning. Um, and my coach was actually the one that was <laughs> suggesting. Yeah, my coach was suggesting that um, I niche down to women and I was very resistant to that. Um, I haven't had the best experiences with women Um really in life and so get another sparkler out right um so like how, why so backstabby i don't get it <laughs> yeah, I, I mean well i'm so direct and so like yeah. what, what i say is what i mean and yeah. i don't have a second layer like right. it's just not there like which is refreshing <laughs> you're 100 percent authentic wow i, I love yeah. it but it but it doesn't jive well in in yeah. in a lot of those circles because i yeah. simply because i don't understand right? It's like sure. my naivete. And so I had a lot of bad experiences with women. So I was very hesitant to niche down to women, but my coach talked me into it and told me it was a good position. And I have to admit he was right. <laughs> he was right. And I did do what I was told. So that did help me to get to the next level. But at a certain point, I did open the group to men. Um, and I, this was the moniker that I used with that is that Wonder Woman is a mindset. It's not, nice. a, gender, it's not a gender bias. Yeah. And a lot of the women in the group were very offended by this in the beginning. Oh. And I had to be willing to let them go because sure. this is something that I believe in gender equality. equality at yeah. the point. Like I yeah. don't care about whatever, whatever you want to choose. It's good with me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes. So it was more than just allowing men. It was allowing fluidity of whatever expression you want to give to yourself like that. I'm not going to hinder that. And so that's Wonder cool. Woman is a mindset, not a gender bias. That's a great, that's a great way to say it. It is because people love to that character. It's overcoming, right? It's justice. It's strength. It's all those things you stand for that you put out there. So that's a really cool transition that you were able to include without changing it. And it's still Wonder Woman. That's, that's really neat. How about, let's see. If, oh, what is the best way for people to contact you if they want to work with you? Because I know you have some amazing programs coming out. I would love you to pitch them, share what it is so people can be connected to all of your awesome sauce, Nicole. And uh, yeah, tell us, like pitch it. I want to hear. I'll tell you all the things. I'll tell you all the things. Okay, so my program, my signature offer <laughs> is a client attraction program. And in the client attraction program, I'm helping that high vibe entrepreneur, the person who really wants to apply mindset and strategy, mm -hmm. not just do cookie cutter templates because I don't do any yes. of that, right? Yeah. Those kind of people who want to express their full selves and attract unicorn clients, which is kind of my moniker for that soul alignment mm -hmm. of clients that you love working with because 
quite honestly, in corporate land, I worked with clients that I had to work with because there were yeah. only so many to work with. The internet is a much bigger place than Reno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get to work with clients that I love working with every single day. And so my program helps you to attract those people. We do zero cold outreach. There's no right. sending messages. There's no DMs, nothing. Everything is attraction-based marketing, the energetics of it, and really aligning with the way that you sell. Because some people are great on a sales call. They really are. And some yeah. people are amazing in the DMs. And some people don't know that they're amazing with pitching yet, right? Because they're too <laughs> right. scared to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it helps you to pull that out of you so that you can identify your social selling strategy that's in your zone of genius and then mm -hmm. apply that to your business. So the whole program really helps you to go from, I mean, I have people coming in who are brand new, who have never done anything um, mm -hmm. and getting up to those $50,000 months. Like it helps you to structure and raise your prices and believe in yourself all the way along the way. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Of course, I'm <laughs> selling it as a client attraction program. Yeah. But it really is what you really get in after you are in the delivery mode is self-assurance. I'm helping mm -hmm. people to build the self-assurance to unapologetically be yeah. their true self. So this ripples into every area of your life. This is how you parent your kids. This is how yeah. the interactions you have with your spouse. This is your friendships, your family, um, your business relationships. All of those things change and grow through this program because you're allowing yourself to be who you really are. I love it. Uh, if you want to get in on more of that, I'll give you guys a little free gift for the audiences that you guys can have access Aww. to 100 wonderful ways to get more and better clients. And this is all attraction-based marketing. There are no cold outreach strategies in here. And that is at nonstopnotifications.com. Perfect. So that'll get you in. And of course, you guys are all welcome to join the group. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of fun in there. And oh yeah, one of the very few groups that you can still um, promote yourself for free. Um, any day you want. There's no promo days. It's just whenever you want, because I don't like to keep track of days of the week. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have, we have a lot in common on that. I know I still want to like organize every post. I'm like, if I want to get on and just share something, I'm going to like, I don't That's understand. <laughs> what do you want to sell today? What don't you want to sell every day? Why is it only one day a week? I don't know. <laughs> I can't keep track of that. <laughs> no, I can't either. I love that. Well, and what we'll do is um, when the podcast comes out in the bio and everything, I'll have all those links in there. So it'll be really easy for them to access that. And that will just get evergreened because that's ongoing, right? Can they always get into um, any of your programs or is there like windows? No, my, my program is actually evergreen. 100% um, of the time you can join um, because again, like I'm not on that launch. I'm not on that launch life. Launch yeah. is luxury <laughs> in my world. And that's what I train my clients is to set up their programs on that evergreen dream so that people can join anytime so that you're not limited by time or um, that kind of energetic space of launching because it can be a yeah. lot, right? Um, yeah. So when you have, when you have an, an aligned system where people are consistently mm -hmm. buying your program, when you go to do a launch, you're not doing it from a place of, I need money. Yeah. So of course it's always. going to look better. That's right. And those flows are always open. That's what I teach my clients too. Like you're always open for business. Why would you ever want to tell somebody no? Like, come on in and do it at your pace. You want to rock it out in two weeks and make money? Go for it. Be a superstar. Like it's, it's amazing how many of these things, literally when I hear you talk, it's like before they went to school, you know? Be like you were before you went to kindergarten where you danced in the rain and believed in yourself and you weren't afraid to go outside in your pajamas and, you know, you had lemonade stands and you thought you could do anything. And then it's like pulling all those layers back to get their self to show up, you know, where they didn't think someone was mean to you because you wore a certain outfit in junior high or, you know, made you feel bad because you thought your hair looked cool and they thought it was like junior high bangs or whatever. <laughs> yes. All the things, Nicole. Oh my gosh. So I absolutely love visiting with you. I feel like I could talk with you all day. I know the audience is going to love you because you share so many amazing things and your spirit is so bright and fun. Like that's one of those things with me is I'm real careful about who I stay connected to, because especially as you're scaling, you want to make sure, you know, and, and I, I'm not afraid to go in my group and just be like, Oh, this person, look at the profile before they come in. I don't want to be connected to that. You know? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, you have to be very selective, like, because yeah. it is like, and listening to somebody else or reading somebody else's content, like being in their, yeah. energy and their frequency, like I always tell people, like, you got to pay attention to what you allow into your ear hole, because inside That's of that, true. it gets, the vibration gets in there. You want to so be true. in that energetic alignment, especially when you're trying to scale your business. 
Exactly. That's, that's amazing. And I think you've done that in such abundance in your group. That's why it's like magnifying fun, right? Magnifying love, magnifying joy. And then if they're not supposed to, or whatever, if this isn't their place, bye, like there's the door. It's okay. You don't have to all come over to my house to play. <laughs> <laughs> yep. One man's hyena is another man's unicorn. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Oh my gosh. That's so good. That You have so many little golden nuggets in here today like sparkler things i'm gonna give you an extra one you've earned the most of anybody who's ever been on the podcast i'll take it i like to win <laughs> we're gonna tell, yeah you do we're gonna just sparkle up your mailbox um i have to ask so i i'm an author i love to write books and this is one i've been working on for a while that each podcast guest that comes in i'm going to include you guys in it but um it's going to be it's a hashtag to my younger self so if you were going to create a hashtag to your younger self, what would it be? <laughs> be the unicorn. Oh, I love that. Of course. I love that. That's cool. That's cool. So that's going to be a fun, like project coming out. It's been the works for a while. There's a lot of neat people that are going to contribute to that bigger work. Cause I just want to lift for doing lift the unicorns. Like <laughs> there's a lot and there's other ones who are just there are these sparkly happy people that want to put more good into the world and I definitely feel you in that circle that's why I wanted to invite you and I'm so glad that you took the time today I'm I'm sorry I had to reschedule in the fall I felt really bad because my son, my husband literally got a blood clot from COVID and it was just like this emergency thing we had to go to the ER I'm like are you serious <laughs> but thank you for being you willing this on a different day <laughs> I know I was honey really I <laughs> so but that's right life finds a way and thank you for being willing to um reschedule and knowing I wasn't trying to do anything uh to okay. dodge it at just life life happens so I have to roll we all have to roll with the things that come our way yeah no I definitely get it <laughs> no worries that's awesome so if there was a final quote or inspirational thing that you would like to leave our audience with today I will just give you the mic this is your like unicorn last message. Little drum roll. <laughs> no, totally do a drum roll. A pressure. Here's, here's my final shtick, my final moment today. Um, you know, growing an online business doesn't have to be hard. It can be something that you allow ease because it is a skill set. And every single skill set that anybody has can be learned. Um, yeah. I built this business to seven figures in 13 months. Like I've only been doing this for two years. I'm brand new at it. This is just the beginning. And if you're feeling that feeling, like it's so overwhelming to start, like it's too many things and I don't know what to do. Allow yourself the space to improve. I think that this mm -hmm. is probably one of the things that, that clients struggle with the most is feeling like they have to have it all figured out. Like that's not how this works. We build mm -hmm. the airplane in the air, like allow yourself to start flying and to figure it out as you go. Because the fact of the matter is this industry is brand new. Yeah. None of us know what we're doing. None of us. We are all in a state of trial and error mm -hmm. and working to improve. So if you feel like an outsider, like you're not like get on in here because we're all doing it together. We're supporting each other and tipping off each other's wings <laughs> and trying to make this thing fly together. This is the best time to get involved because we are the industry leaders and online education is not going anywhere. This is a right. trillion dollar industry short sooner than later. This is yeah. a great time to get involved in something new and have that feeling of like, yes, I am the forefront because think about that. Think about that moment when you're like, should I buy that Bitcoin? And then you didn't. You that, right <laughs> you were right that. right <laughs> this is the same this is your yeah. moment get in yeah. the door now because this is only going to the top and the people who are starting this movement will be the leaders in 10 years we will be the ones that are identifying and creating this space for everyone else absolutely i love it and i love the the niche that you have is so perfect like for me honestly to refer like my clients to go after because we help them like break out of you know, their purpose, handle all this stuff that's holding them back, the grief, get them all dialed in with their program and their consulting and their business and their setup. And what's the next thing you want? How do you get more clients? Right. <laughs> so they're selling a lot of them go from nothing to like seven figures. And then they're like, okay, launch to a million. And so it's really cool because those ones are like, that's what they need. That's a space where I'm like, okay, I always look and I'm like, great. I'm just going to send it in a cool. And you can go there, like blow it up. So that's, that's super exciting. And thank you so much for taking the time today. I have loved all the things we have in common and just getting to learn more about you and spend some special time connecting. Like 
cheers my my new friend see this is my like my teaching my care teach teach everything you know cheers <laughs> yeah <I'm pretty> sure. <laughs> all right nicole well thank you so much for taking the time and um if you want to message me where I can send you your gift, I will send that to you. I'm happy to, to bless you for your wedding. And just thank you so much for taking the time. And uh, any other questions you have for me today? Nope, that's all. This was awesome. Thanks so much. I, I really appreciate it. And I, I love being in your energy. It's great. Thank you, Nicole. All right. I look forward to talking to you again. Call me anytime. Talk soon. Okay. Bye-bye.